I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Well, today I want to talk about a super powerful lifestyle change which has been studied and proven by science to have a very positive impact on your neuroendocrine immune system. Now that's a tough word, but let's break it down. Neuroendocrine immune system. All right, so neuro involves your entire neurological system, your neurons, your synapses, your nerves, that's linked to pain, that's linked to hormones, your feelings and everything else. So you have neuroendocrine. What's your endocrine system responsible for? Everything from metabolism to regulating hormones, turning them on, turning them off. So right from your skin to your hair to your thyroid, to arthritis, to autoimmune, autoimmune conditions, to your inability to lose weight is controlled by your endocrine system. So that's your neuroendocrine immune system. Your immune system by now, you know how important your immune system is. So the powerful lifestyle change that I'm talking about today positively stimulates your neuroendocrine system. Okay, and what I'm talking about is something as simple as laughter. Okay, we've known laughter to be a medicine. It's been used as some of the six top medicines in the world. Sunshine, water, rest, laughter, and all of that stuff. But like I always say, the simplest things in life are never used because they're free. You don't have to spend money on it, so you don't value it, so you don't end up doing it. But today, we have medically and scientifically shown and proven that laughter is now and can be categorized as a prescribed drug. And I'm gonna show you the impact of laughter scientifically on four conditions today. One is diabetes, type two diabetes, your postprandial sugar glucose levels. Two, arthritis, the most severe arthritis, how it can decrease your growth hormones and your IGF-1 factors to reduce your pain during arthritis. Three, the prevention of the onset of complicated diabetes. And four, how we can boost our immune system. All of these four things that millions of people around the world suffer from, I'm not saying you can cure it with laughter, but you can definitely make it better. But the fifth and the most, the most motivating point out of all of this is how laughter is connected with gene expression. Let's start off from there. What is gene expression? All of our cells have DNA and genes. Today, there are a lot of people who believe that if I got genetic cancer, if I have genetic diabetes, if I have genetic high blood pressure, there is nothing that I can do. And that's where you are wrong. There is so much that you can do, okay? Very, very few cases are highly genetic where there's really nothing much that you can do. Infants born with cancers, infants born with severe conditions because of a default in their genes and very little can be done. That's not that nothing can be done, but very little can be done. For everyone else who suddenly, dis who suddenly got diabetes or cancer at a point in their life, you got to relate it to their lifestyle. Something in their gene expression changed. So yes, there is still a lot that you can do. I, I dislike when people blame it on their genes. I dislike when people say, I can't lose weight because it runs in my family. No, you can't lose weight because you're not doing what you should do to change your gene expression. Your poor lifestyle expressed certain genes in the condition that you had. Of course, all of us, you, me, everyone, we carry good genes and we carry bad genes. But you need an environment externally and internally to trigger those bad genes and manifest it into your diabetes, your cancer, your high blood pressure and all of that stuff. This statement that I just made will actually anger a lot of people because they believe and they want to believe that they're out of control. So they want to accept that my disease has come from my mom or my dad, so there's nothing that I can do. But that's where you're wrong. And that's where the wisest people will understand something called epigenetics. What is epigenetics? Epi means environment and genes, genetics. The word epigenetics means your environment controls your genes. You see, your genes can either be upregulated or downregulated. They can be switched on or switched off. Think of your genes as lights on a Christmas tree. You can switch these lights on, you can switch them off. The genes in your system are being constantly upregulated or downregulated based on your lifestyle, based on the internal environment in you and based on the external environment out of you. 
How is it that so many people are reversing their type 2 diabetes? How is it that so many people reverse their high blood pressure? How is it that so many people reverse a cirrhotic liver problem? How is it that so many people reverse their cancers and put them in remission? Your genes. Now what you do, you have a lot that is in your control. Number one is your attitude. When you understand what epigenetics really means, you are still in power. Something turned off your genes. It could be improper nutrition, it could be chronic stress, it could be sleep deprivation, it could be a sedentary lifestyle. All these four things can turn genes off. If they can turn your genes off and express a disease, what turns them back on? Your nutrition, your activity, your sleep, and control of your emotional stress. Let us understand that right now. It is a loser attitude when you say, I'm sick because of my genes. Yes, you are sick because of your genes, but now, what are you doing to upregulate and try to turn on these genes? Like I said, to be fair to a small population of people where the gene is so strong, stronger than the external and internal environment, there may be very little that you can do, but there is still something that you can do. So coming down to something as simple as laughter has now been scientifically and medically proven to number one, okay, regulate and decrease your postprandial glucose. It can lower your blood sugar levels post eating a meal. So if you are involved, there were two things. One is laughter and two, if I told you recently, 10 minutes to 15 minutes after you finish your meal, go for a 10 minute walk. Again, you can decrease your postprandial glucose levels. What's making this change happening? happen? Your gene expression. Laughter, again, two groups, okay? Two groups, one after a meal is made to laugh. Watch a comedy, watch something, read a comic that can really make them laugh genuinely. And their postprandial sugar levels came down, their growth hormones came down, their IGF-1, that's your insulin growth hormone factor one, reduced and your NK killer cells, that's your, that's your uh, killer cells in your immune system that is designed for viruses, bacteria, cancer cells, everything, increased just by engaging in 15 to 20 minutes of really good genuine laughter. Okay, what also happened when this group, okay, laughed, their pro-renin levels, pro-renin is found in blood that can, when you have increased levels of pro-renin, it increases your risk of complicated type two diabetes. But post laughter, your pro-renin levels in your blood actually decreased. So what's happening? How is this change happening? This change is happening because of gene expression. Laughter is able to upregulate, turn on certain genes and turn off certain genes. So we can use laughter right now as a medicine. Whether you have diabetes, whether you have a low immune problem, whether you have cancer, whether you have a deadly disease in your system, what does it cost you to try to laugh? Now, how do you stimulate laughter? You can watch stand-up comedy, whatever it is, okay? I mean, there are so many things that can make you laugh, that can make you feel happy and really laugh from your gut. We're talking about mirthful laughter, that really good, hard laughing is able to do this. Now, what's the connection with rheumatoid arthritis patients? And if it works for rheumatoid arthritis, it works for autoimmune conditions. Again, autoimmune conditions, certain genes are turned off and certain genes which are not supposed to be turned on are turned on and kept on. Autoimmune, your immune system is excited. Your immune system doesn't know how to relax. It keeps attacking your tissues, your body, your joint, your myelin sheet and all of that stuff or your thyroid gland in Hashimoto's or your digestive system, your colon in Crohn's, Graves and other diseases. So something has turned on the naughty gene. We need to turn it off. And if laughter can positively impact gene expression, people, we have something which is so powerful within our hands. Am I saying laughter is going to take away your cancer, your diabetes and stuff? I'm not saying that, but it is part of your recovery process. If you have made up your mind that I want to recover, I want to suffer less, I want to do much more than an allopathic drug that is only suppressing my symptoms. Take it. You need it. But if I can do something over and beyond that, laughter is one of them. So in an arthritis patient, in the control group of arthritis patients who were made to laugh, okay, 30 minutes after a meal or at any point in a day, if you don't have diabetes, the after meal is, is, is 
pertaining to people who have a high postprandial glucose levels, who have type 2 diabetes, have type 1 diabetes. But if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you can laugh at any point in your day if you want to bring about a change in your arthritis. Because arthritis, okay, has a high level of growth hormones. And that high level of growth hormones keeps attacking you, your tissues and your joints and cartilages. In the group, the scientific group that went through the study, 20 to 30 minutes of laughter reduced the growth hormone factor in your blood, reducing your pain, bringing your immune system into a relaxed state so it doesn't attack you anymore. That is the beauty of the neuroendocrine immune system. Something as simple as laughter can bring about a change. But like I said, who all are gonna really implement this right now? Because it's too easy to believe. It's not complicated, you got it free. Anything that's free is never valued by most humans. The smart people will value free, they will implement and they will reap the actions of what they've done. The other people will just go on searching for complication, a pill, something else, did artificial intelligence teach this to me and all of that crap. All I'm here to say is I'm not against all of that stuff. I am against people not using common sense. So right now you have scientifically, medically proven documents on laughter. And like one medical document writes that laughter should be a prescribed medication. Because what does laughter do? How is it working to change our gene expression? When you are sad, chronically sad, when you are chronically jealous, when you are chronically living in resentment, guilt, unforgiveness, you turn off genes that are designed to keep you healthy and that's how you get sick. But if I can move from sadness, I'm not saying don't be sad. It's not possible that you can't be sad. It's not possible that you cannot be jealous. It's not possible that you can't have some amount of guilt. We're not trying to fool anyone here, but don't wallow in that. If you are wallowing in sadness, resentment, unforgiveness, the why me, victim mode kind of a thing, you are changing your gene expression because your outside environment and your inside environment is not what your genes require to turn on and upregulate. So that is why we need to move and look at our emotional health. Most people who are chronically emotionally sick are sick physically as well. They have cancer, they have arthritis, they have lung problems, they have every possible physical ailment. That is why gene expression plays a huge role in prevention and the recovery of even the most deadly disease. So you may be a cancer patient out there right now, you may be a diabetic, you may be someone with a deadly disease. You need to laugh. And you may be saying, how can I laugh? I'm gonna die, I have this problem. You still need to laugh, I'm sorry, discipline. Figure out a way to laugh. You think you cannot laugh because you are wallowed and locked into sadness. That sadness is a result of your own thoughts. Yes, I understand you're sick and it is very difficult to be happy, but watch something funny and laugh because laughter is one of the most powerful drugs that can help you with gene expression. And when you're able to upregulate the right genes and downregulate and turn off the wrong genes, your health gets better. Your possibility and your opportunity to recover gets better, period. The human mind only looks for Two things, I want to recover, how much of money do I need to pay? Now, do your job. It doesn't work like that. Your human body works on physiology, biology, chemistry. Let me share a fun fact for you. Every time you have a really sad thought, you produce a chemical in your body that can downregulate certain genes. And every time you have a happy thought or you feel happy, you produce chemicals that can upregulate genes. Now it's up to you to decide how much of emotional downfall you have in your life and how much you want to do about it because human health starts in the mind and manifests in the human body so people with diabetes out there people with rheumatoid arthritis all the possible autoimmune conditions whether you have cancer or not you're looking at prevention add laughter in your day go back 10 15 years ago we didn't have to try to do this because society was so different that people engaged people engaged the right way there was real laughter not fake laughter because we need to fit in, fake laughter because we need to show that we're happy all the time. No, sit at home, find something that makes you laugh. All of you should have one or two friends who can make you laugh the moment you start talking to them. I'm blessed to have that one friend. And I speak to him, I'm laughing for the next 15 to 20 minutes. That's a medicine for me, he's a drug for me. Example, if not, I watch a lot of stand-up comedy. 
I watch a lot of stand-up comedy. It could be a five-minute segment, a 30-minute segment, a one-hour segment. But in that one hour, I am getting that medication in me, which is laughter. Now, here's another fun point, very scientific in nature. In the Indian tradition, why do we advise people to sit on the floor and eat? Why do we advise people to sit in the Vajrasana position? In Islam, people eat on the floor like us as well. And during the namaz, they bend down. Because that function of sitting on the floor, bending down Vajrasana, actually makes us contract our abdomens, increasing contraction of our pancreas to produce insulin. You see the wisdom in religion, the wisdom in different cultures? We need to take this wisdom instead of fighting and putting religion against one another. There is so much of wisdom. And that is why that abdominal contraction is also created when you laugh. When you really laugh, sometimes your stomach pains, sometimes your abdomen really pains with the contractions. Those contractions, you can link it to the contraction of your pancreas to produce digestive enzymes, insulin, and gene expression. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.